how have I been doing? Uh, more online stuff, obviously. You know, everything concerning the shop, the record shop, um, has been, we stayed open through it all. It's from that we never actually closed like they told us to. But we didn't have people in the store. We, so we moved immediately to online sales. Some people would call or message us and I would actually go record shopping for them. So it was kind of a cool thing. And my, like a friend in Vegas said, you know, pick out 10 albums. And then I sent pictures of the albums. He was like, great, thumbs up, you know, or this one, maybe not that, this one. And I would just shop for him and I sent him, you know, he gave me a budget of two, I think it was $200. So that was great. You know, those things like that are really fun. I did that a few times. I think it was like three or four different times I went shopping for people and then would just send them stuff. Other things that the store did, speaking of so at the, the shop, um, we did an uh, Instagram story where we would put up 20 albums and put sale prices on them and people would order them and we'd ship them to them or deliver them if they were close by. Then I started kind of moving into, on occasion, um, People with masks and gloves on could come one at a time and shop for something, or if they were picking up a turntable. I sold probably, I think, I have five turntables during this time, a couple receivers, some headphones. So people have been wanting to hear music and they're cooped up at home. And so, in that respect, it's been kind of cool and almost as good as it was before. Some of the other items in the shop maybe weren't selling as well because they're things that you come and look at and you want to hold and see if you want to buy it. But uh, people are still interested, you know, especially things that are for their home, you know, and I think that that's been really something we've been kind of trying to tap into. Um, so we're super thankful for at least having that little bit of extra business going on. Um, and then, uh, personally, I've been doing some music here and there. I still feel really unmotivated at times and, and lazy, but I'm still super busy with things, being that we manage the hotel and manage and run the shop and my music. Um, it's quite busy. Um, but there are new ways to deal with that busyness and, and how you manage that business. You know, so. Um, I had recently did a song for a COVID relief compilation in Italy, so I donated a song to that, and that came out well, maybe a month ago, and that was that kind of got me back in. Got, I was like really stale, dead in the water for a bit there. I'd come in and try and you know I brought all my recording equipment here to the record shop and it's kind of set up here to record, but I would kind of sit there behind my laptop and just kind of be looking at news articles and looking at the world and. And then I just I was feeling really unmotivated until I had a deadline. And then when I had the deadline for this comp, it got me moving and I got the song together and it kind of sparked me to kind of start writing again. So now I've been recording a couple more pieces. Um, that's something else that's really great is that people have been reaching out about little projects. Another friend of mine in Chicago, Ben, um, has a project that he's doing and he's asked me to record on that. Um, there's been a few little projects like that that people have kind of sent files my way and then I can do some recording and give back. So that, that's, you know, that's, that's been really good. But um, our spirits are still good, you know. My wife and I hang out. We do some yoga in the mornings. Not every day, but uh, we go on a walk. We've been hiking lately out at Mission Trails. Um, so we kind of try and do things to get exercise and, and get some sun and get our spirits up because I think a lot of people are feeling like they're indoors all the time and uh, we definitely were feeling that way, we're like just cooped up, you know, even though we could walk around this whole building because we were watching, it was like a ghost town around here. So it's like this, you know, feeling of now, now, now it's a little bit more of a relief where we can get out and kind of experience the day a little bit more, but um, we're still very cautious, you know, wearing masks and doing the things we kind of do, you know, to, to abide by the rules. People love to go out and be around people. That's great. You know, I'm not fully that type of person. Getting up on stage to me was always like, damn it, I have to go do this shit. You know, it was always, you know, some people love to go perform. No, it was like the, the bad side of the job for me, you know. I much preferred making the music, hiding out, 
in my house making music. That's why I got into it, was the creative side. So live was always, there's a certain excitement and nervousness that happens to it, but it was never the, the driving force for music for me. So, so I'm trying to go look at it, you know, like, oh wait, this is kind of what I've always wanted. <laughs> so um, maybe not a pandemic to go along with it, but you know, uh, trying to look at the brighter side, you know, but in contrast, I've realized like, I really do miss certain elements of that, you know, you know, maybe not staying up all night at bars and all and touring and all that stuff is really fun and rewarding, but it's really draining. So, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to look at different ways to do it, you know, and I think that goes into how we were speaking about earlier, like DIY kind of methods of dealing with things. It, that all started with having nothing and building not, something out of nothing, you know, or something that other people did cost way too much or was, you know, big major labels had all this money and punk rockers and young people that had music that they wanted to put out had no way to do it. So we found a way, you know, to do it. Um, it's no different. It's just a different set of rules and a different context, you know. So I don't think that's changed for me um, in that regard. Like, I music is more of like the it's like for me music in my life has always been like the color of my eyes i can't change it and it just is what it is and i um you know i've tried to do other things in my life and i still do like managing a hotel running a record shop enjoying other things in life but music is is always there you know a blessing and a thorn in my side all at the same time <laughs> I haven't set up that yet. Digital tipping, I should look into that, you know, but I haven't done that. But amazingly enough, I was paid for, for a performance I did recently for Seaport Village, the Seaport Sessions, um, organized by Tim Mays and, and uh, the Seaport uh, Village um, people. <laughs> uh, and did a live sh stream show of of me performing down at Seaport Village in an abandoned room there, which and then we were only the sound guy and the videographer in the room doing this session. And I they paid me you know a couple two hundred fifty bucks you know which I was floored. I was like, wow, there's some a budget here for this. That's great. You know, thank you. I will take it. <laughs> Part of me felt like donating it to something else, but I was like, wait, this is kind of for me. You know, and this is helping me more than people realize. And of course, I thank them a bunch because I was totally willing to do it for free just to kind of be part of the bigger picture of like getting out there and showing people to do things, you know. But so when there was a little money on the side, that was great, you know, and, and it turned out really cool, I think. And uh, I think, you know, people are then I did an interview the other day with loudspeaker as well to kind of follow up on it. And it's just kind of cool to see people doing things still, finding ways around stuff and actually making it work. Oh. We have an event coming up here at the hotel um, where it's called Cowboy Bear. And normally this is a dinner party that happens and it's where the bear, uh, a chef dresses up as a bear and cooks for people. And it's, you know, rather expensive dinner party that happens here in Little Italy and, and at times at our hotel. So now we have this thing going on where the uh, bear is, uh, we're renting rooms to couples and then they're getting free dinner service in their room. So, I mean, that's a pretty cool way to work around the system so that it's socially distanced, everybody gets their own hotel room, they pay for the night, the food, and they get breakfast as well and they have this intimate dinner that is like a high-end dinner brought to their their door by a bear in a suit. <laughs> it's really fun and really cool and it's it's neat that we're doing that here. You know, I never planned to be part of events or doing events. I actually don't so much like the process, I guess. I like the outcome more. Um, 
I think when I was younger, it started with doing shows, making flyers, punk rock shows, and putting together bands and shows in a very simple, natural way. And then as I progressed through my music career, you know, and started touring and going to events and all that stuff, I was not the event promoter. I really didn't like any of that. I was the musician. I'd show up. But naturally, I found myself in the process of decision making during those things and understanding the method that it takes to kind of put events together, the organization, the, you know, the amount of effort that those things take. Um, so now, at my age, 49, you know, still doing music, still doing everything, I'm still kind of now coming back to putting things together, especially with the hotel and the shop and kind of promoting. And um, so it, it's kind of come full circle in a certain way where now I'm back doing those kinds of things. Um, and it's in a different context where I'm mixing, you know, hotel events with music, with food, with, you know, any idea that people come to me with or an idea that comes to us as a group of people and kind of working within the parameters of that event. So it's, sometimes it's, it has nothing to do with music at all and it's just a food event. Or sometimes it's, uh, you know, a wedding that's happening here at the hotel and you're just having, helping them navigate to, you know, there's nothing more amazing than seeing people happy at the end of an event, you know, and satisfied and that you've done your job and you've helped them achieve something that was a really memorable moment in their life, such as a wedding. So I kind of wrote this thing based on some of these thoughts that we just spoke about, um, and it's, it's called Fool's Game. And it goes something like this. It, it takes a lot of knowledge to make a bow and arrow. It takes a lot of knowledge to make a net and wire. But the birds just fly higher in distress and despair. It takes a lot of knowledge to build a r rod and reel. It takes a lot of knowledge to cast a hook and line. But the fish swim deeper in, into the depths in distress. It takes a lot of knowledge to build a house with wood. It takes a lot of knowledge to build a table to sit and debate. But the discussion climbs wild in distress. It takes a lot of knowledge to see inside and out. And it takes a lot of knowledge to reveal inside and out. But the fire is coming and the wood will burn in despair. It takes a lot of knowledge to build traps and snares. It takes a lot of knowledge to build spears and nets. But in distress, the animals find refuge further into the forest. We search for knowledge to go further and climb higher. We search for knowledge to be stronger and go deeper. But we only fumble in distress and despair through our lives. We plot, we scheme in rhetoric and rumor. We pointlessly debate and argue to find agreement. But we toil in confusion and distress, all for the pursuit, pursuit of knowledge. We all seek knowledge but can't, f can't find what we already know. We all condemn what we don't like, yet we can't condemn what we have that is wrong. The sun and the moon eclipse and the streams and the oceans have no power. The seasons are broken. The insects and plants have lost their nature. This is the consequence of our quest for knowledge. The loud and the spineless advance, the quiet and the calm are cast aside and pleasure is taken in argument. I do not wish to seek for knowledge. One does not need to explain. It's a fool's game. I should give note that that was also inspired by a book I was reading, but it inspired these thoughts about seeking answers and how our world progresses and yet destroys nature over and over. We, we search for all these things and we debate and we lie and we scheme and and, and it, there's no growth in any of that you know so it's sometimes you know I've gotten to this point in life where like I don't really want to know anything more I mean I, I do keep up on some news and stuff like that but I guess the overall gist is we we search to you know go to the moon or do all these grand things in life but yet we're just destroy everything in our path as we're doing it and it just doesn't really doesn't make sense how you tread forth lightly when treading is about destroying stuff, you know? Um, 
it's a weird concept when you get into thinking about those kind of things and and your effect on the world and the yeah that's it's interesting I've lived uh, in several different places throughout my life. Uh, I was born in Monterey, California, moved to San Diego as a kid, and then moved to Italy for three or four years as a young kid, came back to San Diego. As an adult, I've traveled all over the world, and I lived in Portland, Oregon, and then came back to San Diego. And kind of what always brought me back to San Diego, besides the fact that my mother lives here and I have some great friends here, is that San Diego is sure a small pond and you can kind of reach people. You can reach people in that smaller pond. But besides that, culturally, the Latino culture of San Diego is so amazing and strong and just, I'm, I realize I'm the person that likes to be near the ocean. I like borders, I, li I don't like borders necessarily, but I like mixing cultures, you know. I really am a fan of that and it's something when I was away I really miss that element, you know? Most of all my friends, I'm not Mexican at all, but I feel like, <laughs> you know, it's like, like over half of my friends are of Mexican descent, you know, or Spanish descent, and so it's, uh, yeah, it's just part of who I, how I grew up and what I'm familiar with and what I like, you know? And, you know, San Diego is, is great with music. We have all different styles, but because it's small, they kind of mix together really easily where it's not so fractured, you know. There is a different lot of different scenes going on in San Diego, and, you know, there's stuff I have no idea about that's new and fresh going on, but um, eventually it all kind of percolates to this area where you get to hear about things, you know. And we have, have some DJs and, and club owners and stuff that have been doing it for so long and they really have their ear to the ground with a lot of what's going on and they're very thoughtful of it. You know, coming to mind is Tim Piles, Tim Mays, you know. Um, so yeah, it, it's, San Diego is a great place to live. And I've always said that, like, it's great to live here. It's tough to be in a band and, and survive here and really make a living because there's not a lot of opportunity, you know, like there would be in L.A. or New York or, you know, England or, sorry, London or Paris or whatever, a lot more opportunity in Berlin or whatever. But uh, it's a great place to create, a great place to be if you have the means to travel elsewhere. Of course, nowadays we don't, but with the Internet, you can travel all over the world with your music, you know. So... It's a great place to be and exist, and, and it's expensive, but if you live here long enough, you find your way around all that. And uh, I still hope to travel more and bring my music elsewhere some, you know, someday when that all clears up. But um, I've always loved San Diego and said that about San Diego, that it, it's a great place to live long as you can bring your music elsewhere, because the, it is really lacking in... I mean, America in general doesn't support the arts like it should, you know. Um, and it's even tougher the smaller the city gets, you know. And we're, you know, well, I don't know what number size city we're at, 10 or something like that. that 3.5 million sounds right or something like that, yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's not a small city, it's a big city in a certain sense, but people always see it as like this little sea shanty town, you know, or something. But I feel privileged that I was able to be part of something really cool for a long time. Um, although I've always felt like maybe our music was the oddball. I think a lot of people felt that way. You know, we weren't part of the rock and roll side of San Diego. We were more the experimental side. Um, but that's fine, you know, as I've grown older, you know, I used to try and achieve all these things with music and uh, now I kind of just don't care and I accept who I am and how I play and the music I make and it reaches where it's going to reach and I make an effort but I don't go out of my way to make a big effort to, you know, uh, achieve all these dreams and ideas with, you know, fame or anything like that. I think once I got close to that, being on a major label and having those experiences, I tasted something I didn't like. And I kind of went in a whole different route. And, um, you know, 
I don't make commercial music. It just doesn't, you know, it's, I think the best way to describe the music I do is underground because it's so underground, it's nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it's underground people don't hear about it much it's not commercial it's dark it's lonely it's sad and I'm totally fine with that you know it's like a um, it's like an, an old trench coat or something yeah, yeah keeps you dry but may not look that great <laughs> kind of never have looked at other artists and said, I want to do that exact thing. And I've always wanted to have my own voice, you know, and it was always very uncomfortable for me to listen to my voice. But once I stopped, you know, or not once I stopped, but I, I tried to never like have a made up voice. Like I'm going to sing with like this kind of accent or, you know, I just sing like me. I just go out there and, you know, fumble through it and and I've come to accept that that that's my guitar playing is as good as it is my singing is as good as it's gonna get and for me it's about putting together all those things that create an emotion and an, uh, and a picture and imagery for people it's the combination of all those things you know um, so I don't try and be anything but what I am and I don't if I feel like something sounds too much like something else, I probably shy away from it and don't do it. I don't, I really don't try and have a style, although I probably do in some people's eyes, you know, what they can say whatever, you know, that's fine. But in my mind, you know, I don't sit there and ever try and be anything but what I am. And when I've tried to do things like uh, work in some parameters like that, I fail miserably. I, you know, if I try, oh, I'm going to make a happy song or I'm going to do this kind of thing, I, it just doesn't work out. So I've accepted that. Like I never really search for anything but what's going on inside of me when I'm writing. And I, and I try not to even search because searching kind of just brings you no answers, you know. So it's really about allowing yourself to open up and take that time to to create something and um, you know humans always search for answers for things but yet they they can't seem to kind of they were they're looking everywhere else but they can't seem to answer what's right in front of them you know like what's right and so you know so you know uh, it, it's an interesting world you know politicians point fingers at people, people blame other things, you know, you did it, you did it, but then they can't look at their own faults right in front of them, you know, things that are stopping themselves from forward movement, you know, and progression and, and understanding and um, it, it takes a lot of effort to build a house out of wood and do all these different things, but it only takes an instant to burn it, you know, and we give fire to certain people that are burning our rights, our, our efforts, and, uh, and it's about, I think a good thing to do is acknowledge that, or try and recognize those points where you're fueling fire for people, you know, giving them the ability to, and that starts with allowing them to control what you're doing. So you have to remain control of what it is that you're giving to the world. Because the moment you relinquish that and you tell somebody else, okay, I'm gonna try and play by your rules and do this, you're giving that control up and they're gonna burn your house down as quick as they fucking can to get your money, to get your credit, to get, you know, for their own gain, whatever that gain may be. You know, and it's true, It's I've seen it left and right. I'm 49 years old, been doing music, for a long time and uh, people will take you for what you're worth and stretch your soul out thin and expect things of you and put limitations and expectations for you to try and achieve these things. But what is the point in trying to achieve something if there's never any reward? So the reward has to become from within you. The reward has to be gained by fulfilling something inside of you that is a voice that needs to be spoken. And 
if you can find an audience to hear that voice, then that's that's the true reward, and that's a great thing. You know, that's you know just the idea of being able to create is the reward. So, um, yeah, that's kind of some of the things I think about at times. Yeah, I would say stay calm and <laughs> go inside and inside yourself, I mean. Of course, we're all inside the house, but, and uh, do those things you always said you were gonna do but never did. Because now you have the, we have a little bit more time and, and things are a little bit slower and calmer and I think that's a great thing. I think, you know, we've always had this like five day work week it's kind of bullshit, you know. I think now people can kind of go in and have, you know, a three-day work week. And you can, I think you can, I mean, obviously some people are working more than others and it's more stressful and financially draining and everything like that. But I think this time inside where we're not out running around can really be a productive time to kind of get some of those things done creatively that, um, you know, once you're done cleaning your house and there's nothing left to clean, you can kind of go on and finish some things that, and projects, you know, whether it's art, music, anything, reading a book, whatever, you can have that time a little bit to kind of do these things. Um, and I think looking within yourself and looking at the world, it, it's, it can be a motivating time. I mean, this, what's happening here hasn't happened since the Black Plague, you know, it's like, uh, it's a different time for everybody, so um, yeah, stay calm, enjoy what you can, don't let it eat you up. Reach out for me, reach out for me, girl, my baby, reach out.